now. Hi, David. Thank you very much for joining me. Can you see and hear me okay? I can. Hi, yeah. Hi, Helen. Yeah, I can see you perfectly and hear you perfectly. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to just ask you a few questions. Obviously, we've met plenty of times, but I'd like to ask you all about your work and what goes into it. So if you're happy, the first thing I'd like to explore a bit further is how would you describe your style and your approach to your work? Well, my, I'm, in simple terms, I'm a figurative painter in the sense that 99.9% um, .9 of my paintings have figures in them. They, they can be very abstracted, but they basically they all have, uh, have figures in. Um, and, but the way I like to work is very much an expressionistic uh, way. Um, in other words, when I'm, when I'm making the art, I'm working very very fast and I'm using my hands and I'm using sponges and rags and I'm scraping things off and uh, uh, and um, because I'm trying to eke out a, a sort of uh, extra visual kind of content for the for the picture if you like so I suppose to sum it up I'm a sort of expressionistic figurative artist Yes, okay, and I, but the expressionistic part, you were saying when we spoke that a lot of it is about that process when you get into your studio in the morning and you kind of get everything ready or your, you know, your tools, which include your hands, you were saying as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in, the way I've, I've, I've evolved a way of working over, over a, quite a long period of time and, and it's, it, 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 it bears fruit for me and basically the way it works is I'm quite, um, when I come into the studio in the morning, I, I spend a lot of time getting everything absolutely pristine and perfect and tidy and so that I know where everything is because as soon as I start to paint, uh, I like to go berserk and I like to be able to just grab things as I need them because the way I work is I try not to use my the conscious side of my brain. I try to just work from the sort of inspirational uh, subconscious side of, of, of my brain and I find that I can engage that best if I'm working very very fast if I'm working very very fast I don't have time to sort of think intellectually about what I'm doing and it doesn't obviously it doesn't always work but um, I found over, over the years that it, it, it often throws up uh, very unexpected results and very results that I'm happy with mm. and what's your what's your process in terms of the right right at the beginning the origination of an idea that the kind of what sparks in your brain that makes you think right I need this is a good idea I need to start it well my, my favorite part of the process is the start which is where I I, I, I I'm constantly gathering found material and that can be anything from a st st something I've seen on TV where I can freeze frame the telly and photograph it on my on my ca uh, phone camera, or it can be photographs from um, a car boot sale, for example, uh, old photographs. Um, it might be something that I've just stumbled across on the internet. It, it tends to be material that comes to me by accident, anyway, uh, or randomly. Um, but and I go, I sift through that material and I and I boil it down to one or two images that some something about that image that kind of resonates very strongly uh, with me and I just get this um, kind of inkling that I, there's something in there that I'm going to be able to if I work hard enough uh, on that image I'm going to something's going to evolve something interesting is going to evolve so I, I start by uh, basically going through all, all the material that I found over the previous few weeks and then the, the ones with, that seem to have the most potential I explore initially as in my ideas books as very small uh, watercolours, sort of what you might call thumbnails. Um, and uh, what I've been doing more recently is that with the ones of those that I like the most, I've then been exploring them slightly larger as uh, miniature uh, on, on wooden panels using egg tempera. Uh, and again, I, 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 for some reason, I'm finding that uh, that particular combination of things, the egg temper and the small panels, um, helps me nudge forward 
the ideas that I'm working on. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's a journey of discovery and I'm trying to discover what it is that it, about that image that resonates uh, with me. I suppose, so it's, so first of all, there's that process of finding the image and then you're sifting through and it's the ones that sit with you that go on that journey. Do you find that the ones you end up working up that you're happy with tend to have anything in common, you know, whether it's that they're adult or child, male or female, set in a particular setting, or is it really, have you found over the years, it, is, it can just be anything? It can, it's, it, it can be anything. I also, also what I've found recently, um, or more recently anyway, uh, the material seems to find me, so to speak. Whereas in the past, uh, I kind of had to force it. I had to spend a lot of t time going through material books and things, trying to find material. But more often than now, I, I don't know why, but more often and or not than now, it seems to find me, which is... A lot, you know much easier um uh but the yeah the material itself i it it's tends to it's uh, the one thing it all has in common is it's set in the past and um the the reason that seems to work best for me is that i i, I describe my paintings in a, as an exploration of memory so if the source material is clearly in the past that that gets you know that that already reinforces this notion that um it's some sort of a memory um and where when i'm developing the actual composition i'm deliberately editing out bits i, I very rarely add anything in um to a to a found image i wouldn't you know like add another figure or put a person who's in a field or, onto a mountaintop or anything like that I, I, but I but I often edit things out and and those and that can even be parts of people so an arm might disappear or uh, you know parts of a face but it's all it's not um, how can I put it it's not conscious it's it's whatever seems right when I'm when I'm doing it is is it's that expression if it doesn't look right it's wrong so from my point of view I just work on it and, and then eventually something looks right and then I know, well, that, that's it, you know, I've, I've, cracked, I've nailed it. Yeah, and I think we we spoke before about it's, there's this lovely thing that you're sort of bringing this lost thing back, giving it some kind of new life or kind of stopping that memory from being lost completely. Yeah, that, that's something that um, is, is very, is a kind of very powerful, um, uh, motivation for me uh, or has become a very powerful motivation is I'm aware that if I say for example um, a friend sends me um, a box of photographs that he's found on a in a in a flea market and they're uh, maybe set in the late 50s or early 60s um, I'm aware that this is these are photographs that belong used to belong to a family and they were they it was their record of the happiest moments in their life and but somehow they've ended up in a flea market so that means that family maybe people have died or or the family's broken up or whatever and I, and I, it's in, a, in and and somehow they've arrived on on my desk and i've become the custodian of that material and it you know i get this sort of strong sense that i'm kind of rescuing these memories at a point where they they were just about to fade away for into the ether forever I, i've been able to kind of um uh you know rescue them and and kind of re -per you know to use that phrase repurpose them I feel I'm, I'm able to kind of repurpose them in the form of a of an artwork that is a very powerful thought actually you you you're absolutely right because if they've gone to a flea market or a car boot sale i would imagine had they not sold they would probably end up being thrown away which when you think about it in the context of what you're talking about is quite upsetting um but i think the other thing i find interesting about your work when people can read onto your work their own story. So they might recognize their grandmother or they might put upon it an image they saw of their father's child, for example. Yes. I love. Yeah, that, that's very, a very important part of it as far as I'm concerned. I want to, I want to make uh, an image that, uh, where I can invite the viewer to complete the, their own narrative. So, 
I don't, I'm, I don't want to prescribe the narrative, the, the story behind that image, because I, I, I may have my own, I have a narrative in my, in my own mind, but that quite often when I'm, when I'm working on a, on a particular painting, that narrative changes, that, you know, the, sort of the narrative I, it might be in my mind at the start, won't be necessarily with the one that's there at the end because it's there's been a process of evolution. But when it, when it's finished and it's in the public domain and the viewer's looking at it, I, I I want the viewer to project their own narrative onto it. And occasionally, I'm fortunate enough to for them for them to share their narrative with me. And I always find it absolutely fascinating because, of course, everybody sees things differently. Some people might find a, a, a painting particularly moving uh, might take them back to some you know memory from their own childhood somebody else might find it quite uh, macabre or slightly disturbing and for me that you know I, it's all very interesting yeah and we've spoken before about this but that a bit of a, a thread running through your work is this we talked about melancholy and you i think got quite a unique take on melancholy as being something good not something negative yeah i mean I, I i like to think that all of my paintings in fact have a have a sort of melancholic theme running through them i'm, I'm not it's not something that i've deliberately set out to do it's just i think it's a combination of two things which one is where i come from west cumbria which is a very desolate dark place uh, on the side of the lake district but it's got a very high rainfall uh, level of rainfall and um, it's also all the muni municipal buildings are made out of sandstone so when it, when it rains they all turn black so it's a very kind of um, melancholic um, gloomy place having said that I love it I love you know I feel at home when I whenever I'm in West Cumbria I, I feel at, feel at home there um, so I think I said it was two things, but I can't remember what the second thing was. Uh, but anyway, it's, yeah. So the melancholy comes from, um, partly comes from, um, you know, where I come from. And the other aspect I was going to ask you about was the, the kind of, the era, the time period, although your work seems to me to have a timeless feel to it because of these sort of washed out faces and, um, sort of not neutral backgrounds, but you could make them be anywhere where they've been set. What sort of era do you find you're drawn to, if there is one? Yeah, well, I find that I've, I've, I've realised as relatively recently, there's this, there's this kind of hotspot, which is around about 1962. And what, why it should be that 1962, I've no idea. I would have been eight years old in 1962. So it's, it's to do, I guess it's, um, a lot of it is to do, I suppose a lot of my paintings are to do with a childhood or, or a child's view of the world, even if it's a painting of adults, it might in a sense be the adults viewed from, from a child's perspective. Um, but I, I actually just remember the second part, the, the second part of the answer for the previous question, That's which right. is that I've got this love of statues, you see, and in particular, um, the Elgin marbles, the, the Parthenon, Parthenon statues at the British Museum. And um, I've, whenever I go to London, if I've got the time, I go and see them because to me, they, the fact that they are standing there with all the you know, bits missing, arms missing and parts of faces missing, they all appear to have this incredible stare. They're sort of staring into eternity and that, is this something that I try and overlay on everything that I do is that kind of stare, that statue stare thing. I absolutely love it. And, um, I, you know, I like to think that's a sort of another characteristic of my, of my paintings. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you very, very much indeed. I'm sure we'll be chatting again very soon. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.